everybody, I'm Claire and uh, welcome to my video blog. Now today I want to talk about what's happening in uh, Europe. It's uh, late July 2016, uh, what is it, 27th or something like that, um, 28th tomorrow, 27th today I think, and um, Europe is just trying to come to terms with the fact that we've had like um, a series of um, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, almost all of them unequivocally Islamic terrorist attacks, um, almost on a daily basis for the last week. I've lost track of them, kind of. Um, it's not that long since we had Nice, that appalling business. And then last week we've had um, we've had an axe attack. This is all ha most of it's happened in G Germany. Um, we had an axe attack. There was an axe attack. Um, there was um, uh, something in Munich. Um, there was a woman who was a pregnant woman who was uh, macheted to death um, in Germany. And um, there was another one, I can't remember what the detail on that one was, and then yesterday we had the 86-year-old priest in Normandy uh, celebrating Mass with his congregation when um, a known um, ISIS sympathiser um, burst into the church and... Um, I think we know the result. I think we know the rest. Um, and I was trying to see if any of the uh, leaders, particularly um, Hollande or Merkel, might have had something worthwhile to say in response to this. Um, but um, they merely talk about how we should rise to the challenge and not respond with hate, and stand together, and all the kind of uh, platitudes that we've become a little bit too accustomed to over the last uh, 18 months or so, since the uh, Charlie Hebdo event at the beginning of last year, and so what's the point of me making this video? The point of me making this video is not to go into the details of the attacks. I'm sure if you uh, watch Stefan Molyneux, I'm sure he'll give you a lot more detail um, than I could. What I'm, <coughs> what I'm uh, making this video for is because uh, simply for the act that we must speak about this because our misleaders are, well, they're misleading us. Um, they say meaningless things which don't get us anywhere they make excuses um i uh, have seen several um, references to people saying that uh, oh yeah there was a tweet unbelievable um something like that what we should be really concerned about is um the uh, feelings of muslims um uh, who feel who might feel rejected and then um, there's another one which um, was suggesting uh, this wasn't a tweet this was some politician in France was suggesting that it's because we haven't been sufficiently um, welcoming to the Muslims and the refugees and the migrants that this happens um, I mean, I think this is complete utter nonsense because if, well, I don't think there has been. I mean, I, I can only think of one um, identifiable um, white nationalist um, shooting um, in the last, in this period of the last 18 months. Um, last year, there was the uh, Dylan Roof in um, Charleston, I think it was. <coughs> but one one person one person and that, that wasn't even in europe um and yet perpetually excuses 
are being made. It's not all Muslims, blah, blah, blah. I'll get back to that. But the point I was saying about making this video is that you have to speak about these things. You have to. I um, I know it's, it's kind of pretty small beer, but I've been... Um, I've been uh, pestering one of my local councillors about this. Now, fortunately, we don't have, to my knowledge, in this part of the city at least, um, anything like what happened at uh, Rotherham, but uh, who knows what there might be in other parts of uh, Leeds. Um, but, um, and I don't expect to make a big change with this overnight, but I have known this chap for... Um, something like 25 years and um, although he's a Labour Party member um, he d is quite a decent chap and he I know he 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 recognises his conscience even if he doesn't always act on it um, and there have been well basically every time I've kind of had been involved with campaigns which have involved him um, I've always won oh I've not just not on my own I mean I've been part of local campaigns and we've won and he has on um, at least one occasion to me said to me Claire you were right so I am um, I like to use that kind of leverage um, and um, he was kind enough to come around and pay me a visit here um, before between the elections between the May elections and the referendum sometime around about the end of May I think it was and um, I talked about this issue of the swamping of our culture and our people by mass immigration and what was going to come and this was before Nice this was before the current outburst this daily thing that we've kind of moved into now and I said that, that, that there would be stuff coming and I didn't expect it to be as soon as this but I said that to him and he kind of shook his head and he said I know I know what can we do you know I said, well, you have to recognise, first of all, that the Labour Party is largely to blame for this, but uh, we need to get that's just the first step. You know, we, There's a lot more to this than just blaming the Labour Party. Um, you have to recognise the, the threat of Islam and the fact that, of course, not every Muslim is participating in this. It's not about individuals it's about an ideology back in the 1950s and 1960s and 1970s and 1980s um, we here in Europe and America used to worry about the uh, communist threat and communist infiltration and of course we uh, would have you know, known that it was ludicrous to um, suggest that every single Russian or Ukrainian or anybody else behind the Iron Curtain were all die-hard communists who wanted to uh, march across Western Europe and subject us to the uh, Soviet rule. Of course not. But uh, in fact what we have now is a far greater threat because it's a far more invasive ideology because it's 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 a kind of more covert ideology um, and uh, the cultural Marxists are letting them in here. Um, so people, yeah, well, so I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching my councillor and I'm pestering him. Now, the last few days, I've sent him a couple more emails. I've sent him uh, the information, the Stephen Coglin lecture series, which I highly recommend. I will link them again below because. I mean, I had seen quite a few videos by Dr. Bill Warner, and that had alerted me, and that was quite clear. And, excuse me, he did a very excellent uh, interview with Lana Lochteff on the Radio 314. But um, I think the Stephen Conlon videos, because they're pressing on the immediate situation whereas Dr. Bill Warren talks mostly about the historical situation about Islam itself. Stephen Coglin talks about the present situation, or at least as it was in 2012, and it's accelerated quite a lot since then. So what I'm really, you know, saying to my counsellor is, uh, look, this is what we talked about. It has started. It has started. And do, does anybody really think that this is going to abate seriously after this? 
Um, I know France um, considers itself to be a secular state, but it has many, many millions of people who still consider themselves to be Roman Catholics. And the idea of a priest being murdered at the altar, I mean, it's, it's like something out of the Middle Ages. I mean, you know, um, I think it was King Henry II who... Uh, foolishly ordered his uh, knights to uh, um, rid him of the turbulent priest, um, St Thomas of Beckett, as he was later to become. Um, but, uh, I mean, that was, in the Middle Ages, that was, that was like, you know, monstrous crime. And um, we're getting this kind of thing nearly every day. I mean, the actual priest at the altar, obviously, it's the first in that kind of extreme category but we um, should be seriously worried that the Pope is not is not taking um, a posture on this he just seems to be willing to uh, submit us to the jihadis and the uh, Anglican um, archbishops do as well so An essential part of this, I mean, we're not going to, we're not going to overcome this overnight, but the, the first thing I think we have to break through is this mindset, this, this complete brainwashed mindset that um, people think, oh, well, this is not all Muslims and we must stand together because that's completely meaningless. What we have to think of is long-term reversal of this, but the first step is to get people to realise that this is Islam. This is Islam. This is... You see these people, most of them are kind of... Well, you get the kind of mindset. If you've got, if you've got somebody who's a migrant, then they're not already settled in the country. They've come here. Islam has this conquering mindset. You settle, you conquer. Um, there's all this... In the background, they come to this country. Um, there's too many of them. Um, they don't. They don't have a place. They can't fit in. Uh, their people feel uncomfortable around them. Then these people. It's kind of a mental health issue, really. Um, and then they go ape shit. I mean, obviously, you know, um, this young chap who murdered the priest. He didn't have some hotline back to ISIS, but he doesn't need to. It's the mentality, it's the whole mindset, it's the whole culture which has been built up over 1400 years of repetition, repetition, repetition. We are the Christian European crusaders who must be destroyed, they must take over our civilization, they must destroy Christianity, they must destroy Europe. Um, and there must be some complicity. I, I'm quite convinced there must be some complicity at some high level. I mean, certainly we've seen May, Theresa May, we've seen her saying nice things about Islam. These people, they are either complicit with Islam at a high level or they simply don't understand it. And they should, because you should not get to be Prime Minister of Great Britain in Northern Ireland without having a proper security briefing on the ideology of countries which are seeking to um, send literally millions of people in into uh, the European zone um, and I'm not surprised that the East the Eastern Europe is more aware of this because they had to put up with a series of seemingly endless uh, predations from uh, the Turks and the Muslims in the Middle East and um, that took place over hundreds and hundreds of years I mean it took the, the, the Eastern Roman Empire existed after Rome collapsed in the fifth century the Eastern Roman Empire continued and that was gradually worn away by Islam from the seventh century onwards into the 15th century when um, the Byzantine Empire was finally um, brought to its knees and collapsed under the weight of Islamic predation and uh, they took Constantinople which is now known as Istanbul 
and they now want to get back into Europe. Now the thing is that uh, that was a very long-lasting civilization. It was very corrupt, and it gradually uh, decayed and collapsed after it uh, withdrew from. It got as far as the gates of Vienna and Battle of uh, the Gates of Vienna, to 1683, and uh, it was um, uh, forced back. Um, but still, you know, you probably know of um, Lord Byron, you know, fighting with the Greek. Um, partisans in the early 19th century um, and then it was finally defeated at the end of the First World War. Now we've forgotten about all this but to them, well that's only a century ago, you know, Ottoman Empire lasted 500 years or more, you know, a major part of the Caliphate. So really these people, they just, they just see that as a temporary hiatus, historically speaking, whereas we have, in the West, we, we barely even remember that it happened. And this is, this is what it's about. It is another wave, it is another wave of uh, jihad, the uh, Islamic doctrine. Um, and it's, at the moment, one thing I'd like to say is people say, well, it's just these kind of lone nutcases. But what I, the way I see this is that, um, you've probably seen this in movies like uh, Braveheart or something, you know, when you had these... Like in the olden days, when you had um, armies lying up, lining up um, in battle against each other, um, there would be a great big long line on the other side and, you know, be an open field in between and they would gradually start speeding up and speeding up and speeding up and then the cavalry would be thundering, they'll be getting faster and faster and faster. And then, or if they're just on foot, uh, the same thing. Um, but what you would have is that the Romans were always very good at keeping, maintaining uh, a line, but when you have undisciplined soldiers, you get outliers, they break away, and they do damage, but they're kind of kamikaze, so that, um, and that's what we're getting at the moment, with these unstable um, outliers, these, these, these nutcases, these people who are driven by a mixture of their own psychological craziness, um, and, and Islam, and it's probably a mixture of their own inability to uh, um, integrate their normal human desires into our society because they've got the thwarting of the Islamic doctrine. Um, so, um, they, what we're seeing now is like the outliers, like the first people, like the, the, the warriors who break ahead of the throng and just as I said to uh, my counsellor a few weeks ago that we would be moving into a period in which there was an increased um, number of uh, terrorist attacks and violence by um, migrants and immigrants into our country, people of alien culture, primarily Muslims, Islam, because that is what it teaches. And now I... Well, I'm, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. In fact, I'd be very surprised if it didn't accelerate. And of course, you know, uh, cultural Marxists will say, oh, well, you're provoking it. You know, people have said that um, Brexit had something to do with this or that um, Trump ha in some way has to do with this. Well, th th there is there is a correlation. The correlation is not causation. Um, the rise of Trump and Brexit are merely indicators of the same thing that is going on underneath that fortunately the deeper collective mind of the European peoples is waking up to this despite all the cries of uh, racism and propaganda against them they know that it's not right to have millions of people who have no roots here culturally uh, or ancestrally um, and that when people amongst this demographic are increasingly hostile, they're ghettoized, um, it's become quite clear over the last decade that the whole integration thing didn't work, um, the whole multicultural thing leaves more friction than anything else. So, it's, it's just become apparent that this is not going to get any better and we are going to carry on seeing our misleaders tell us that we shouldn't blame Muslims. No, I don't want to blame any individual Muslim in particular, but I do blame the dogma of Islam which 
is uh, determined to um, take over Europe, as uh, Hassan al-Banna said in about 1930. The nature of Islam is to dominate and not to be dominated, to impose its law and power to the whole planet. And how many times have you seen Muslims with uh, posters and banners saying Islam will dominate the world? This is it. This is it. And it doesn't matter how many of them do it, because um, there's in, as long as there's enough of them doing it, uh, and then there's the remainder of them just standing by and possibly either not stopping it or ignoring it or, or even, you know, supporting it like the way that Abdeslam brother did in Molenbeek, then we can be sure that it will continue to advance. So the only sane policy is to, first of all, recognise that Islam is not going to become an integrated part of our society. Islam's principal purpose is to take over and eradicate um, uh, the existing culture. There, so, so we have to, first of all, we have to recognise that, and then the second part, the second thing we have to do is realise that we have to take a long-term plan of disengagement with the Islamic um, world. So what does that mean? What that means is that we have to think in terms of initially stemming the tide of migrants who are principally Muslim. Um, then we have to have legal sanctions against the spread of Islam, such as um, closing down mosques, um, which many of which have been found with arms in them. Um, they are the, the, the basic teachings of uh, Islam are to take over and destroy our culture. So this is basically uh, treason and insurgency within our nation. And then we have to gradually move towards de-Islamification um, of our countries. Now we only have jurisdiction in our own countries and I don't think we should um, have more active engagement with them uh, abroad than is absolutely necessary. Um, but we have to, it's this, the Spanish did this, the Spanish did this, um, it took them, I think is it 700 years or something, to, uh, um, so we just have to have, we have to recognise that once the number of the population get beyond about two or three percent of Islam, of Muslims, then they will start making demands, which is more than a normal minority group um, would have for rights that a normal minority group would have. So um, this has to be recognised. It is it is a cancer in our system. It is here. To destroy us. No, not all individual Muslims are actively carrying this out. No, not all not all Muslims actively realise what this is about, but nonetheless this is the ideology and there are a sufficient number of people within Islam who are prepared to push that ideology, to, to push their fellow Muslims who might not be that bothered, and to continually up the ante. So it has started we have to be aware of it, and we have to talk about it. That's all I can do at the moment. Um, I don't have any political power or office. All I have is my little camera and a YouTube channel. And um, we, we need to talk about this. What else can we do, you know, um, when there are enough voices raised against these people, when enough local people um, contact my councillor and say, look, councillor, um, you have to admit that this is this is something that's really bad and you have to admit why it's happening and we have to start taking a new track. We can see that the whole of the political scene in Britain and the whole of Europe in many ways is completely melting down and new party alliances are coming out. Who can say where we will be in two or three years' time? Well, we have to make sure that this voice, the voice of de-Islamification, because um, is, is, is fully expressed because if we don't, the summer of blood, 2016, will not be the last. So you have to think about this, folks. Thanks for watching. 
in Normandy uh, celebrating Mass with his congregation when um, a known um, ISIS sympathiser um, burst into the church and um, I think we know the result. I think we know the rest. Um, and I was trying to see if any of the uh, leaders, particularly um, Hollande or Merkel, might have had something worthwhile to say in response to this. Um, but um, they merely talk about how we should rise to the challenge and not respond with hate and stand together and all the kind of uh, platitudes that we've become a little bit too accustomed to over the last uh, 18 months or so since the uh, Charlie Hebdo event at the beginning of last year and so what's the point of me making this video? The point of me making this video is not to go into the details of the attacks. I'm sure if you uh, watch Stefan Molyneux, I'm sure he'll give you a lot more detail um, than I could. What I'm, <coughs> what I'm uh, making this video for is because, uh, simply for the act, that we must speak about this. Hello everybody, I'm Claire and uh, welcome to my video blog. Now, today I want to talk about what's happening in uh, Europe. It's uh, late July 2016, uh, what is it, 27th or something like that, um, 28th tomorrow, 27th today I think, and um, Europe is just trying to come to terms with the fact that we've had like um, a series of um, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, almost all of them unequivocally Islamic terrorist attacks, um, almost on a daily basis for the last week. I've lost track of them, kind of. Um, it's not that long since we had Nice, that appalling business. And then last week we've had, um, we've had an axe attack. This is all, most of it's happened in Ger Germany. Um, we had an axe attack, there was an axe attack, um, there was um, uh, something in Munich, um, there was a woman who was, mach a pregnant woman who was uh, macheted to death um, in Germany, and um, there was another one, I can't remember what the detail on that one was, and then yesterday we had the 86 year old priest because our misleaders are well they're misleading us um they say meaningless things which don't get us anywhere they make excuses um i uh, have seen several um, references to people saying that uh oh yeah there was a tweet unbelievable um something like that. What we should be really concerned about is um, the uh, feelings of Muslims um, uh, who feel, who might feel rejected. And then um, there's another one which um, was suggesting, uh, this wasn't a tweet, this was some politics.